Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Dam Noah here at Dam Studio, and today I'm going to show you how to get a nice grungy and grainy texture for your design. Kind of like this one here. So we're going to go into Photoshop, we're going to have our design image or a design layer, and as most of you probably know, Threshold is primarily used in creating graphics to flatten the image into just a white and black image and then go from there. But when we threshold a design, we get this kind of clunky, boxy kind of look that isn't really desirable when we're really trying to get a grungy and grainy texture. So before we go ahead and threshold our design, we're going to go to our design layer, we're going to convert to a smart object, and then we're going to go up into filter and then filter gallery. So in our filter gallery, what we're going to do is we're going to go to texture drop down and we're going to go to grain and then we're going to select regular I like to hit the contrast right in the middle around 50 and we're going to have the intensity pretty high so as you can see we're getting those grainy little pieces inside of the image and I'm going to go and add another grain we're just going to do a soft one this time just because why not just get more detail out of it. And you don't just have to do grains for this texturing process. You could use any of these other ones here, mosaic tiles, texturizer, crackler, patchwork, basically whatever sort of texture you're really looking for. Um, but I wanna get a really nice clean kind of grainy texture going on. So I'm gonna use these two here. Let's go ahead and hit okay. So you see our grain applied to our image there. And now we are going to apply our threshold. And now when we go to drag our slider around, we can see that we're getting those nice kind of grainy edges and we're getting a lot more detail replication for our image there. When we go to recolor this image, it's gonna look a lot cleaner and it's just gonna look a lot more realistic and more textured. So for our design image here, we're just gonna go ahead and rasterize the layer. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this our shadow layer. So we're just gonna adjust the slider just to get nice black values for our shadows. And then we're gonna grab our threshold and our design image, and we're gonna duplicate it and drag it above. And then we're gonna keep moving the slider a little bit to the right each time, doing the exact same thing, duplicating above. And we're working our way towards the highlights here. So we're gonna do this a couple more times, getting the image tighter each time, a little bit less white each time. And this final layer here will be our highlights layer. So now we've got our highlight up top and we've got our shadows down below. So now we're gonna grab our thresholds and our images and we're gonna just duplicate them together going down or merge them together, sorry, going down. And in order for us to be able to see these bottom layers underneath our top highlights layer here, we're gonna have to go into our magic wand and we're gonna select these black values and we're gonna delete going down. Boom. And we're not gonna delete the black values on this very bottom layer here because we wanna keep this black in here. Let's say you have a more complex image and you've got images going on in behind your main image here. You're not gonna to wanna to delete the blacks because then now it's gonna be like a transparent image and there's gonna be a lot going on. We want this top image to stay as the main focus on top. So now on our very bottom shadow layer here, we're gonna go into our color overlay and we're gonna kind of decide what kind of color direction we wanna go in. So I'm thinking a nice kind of techy blue. So I'm gonna do like a darker blue for this first shadow layer and then I'm gonna go up to our layer above and I'm just gonna sort of work my way lighter and lighter each time and just kind of do it to taste. Do what you think feels like looks the best. But yeah, just play around with the coloring, work your way up to the highlights. I think that looks pretty good right there. And we'll do it again for this highlight layer up here. We're working our way up towards getting lighter and lighter. I'm thinking that looks pretty good. By default, our top highlight layer is a pure white. Pure white doesn't come through when you're printing. So you're gonna wanna bring this down just a touch, just so it comes out the way it looks on the screen. So I think that coloring looks pretty good for our image. You can do it however you'd like. Uh, so we're gonna grab all of our layers. We're just gonna group them together here. And as you can see, uh, we have a really nice kind of color separation, grungy, grainy kind of texture going on here from the shadows all the way up to the whites to the highlights. 
So now we're going to want to texture this image up with some photocopy textures. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my textures folder and I'm going to go down to my photocopy textures here. Black Market has really great photocopy textures. I highly recommend checking them out. I use them for most of my designs. We're going to grab this black photocopy texture, throw this on top here, and we're going to play around with our blending modes. I'm going to do a I'm going to do lighten. I'm going to bring the opacity down just a bit. Gives it a really nice texture though, as you can see. And I really like texturing my stuff up like crazy, so we're going to throw another texture on there. Why not? Let's spin this one around. Let's vertical. And then let's drag and resize so it fits the whole canvas. Awesome. And then again, we're going to go down to lighten there and adjust the opacity to something a little bit lower so it's not too overwhelming. Now I like to add vintage textures to give it more of like a worn effect on the design itself there. So I'm going to go up to the Fuller Motel texture pack. Fullermo has really great textures. I think it's like $10 for both packs. It's a really great deal. I'd highly recommend it. Uh, let's go with like a light simple grunge here and let's resize that. For these textures, I'm going to throw these underneath the photocopy textures because I don't want these to sit on top and affect these photocopy textures themselves. I just want it to affect the image. Let's go to blending modes. Let's do multiply. looks pretty good there and you can adjust it. I think it looks pretty good at 100% honestly. And let's go ahead and throw on another texture there. Let's do a vintage sparse grunge. And let's resize that to full. And let's go to our blending options and let's set that to, I think multiply looks good again there. And you can adjust the opacity. As you can see, we've really grunged up this image here and we've got really nice color separation on each layer here from the shadows to the highlights. But yeah, for, our, for the next video, I'm gonna show you how to actually target these individual pixels of each layer and enlarge them so that when you go to print, you're gonna get a really nice deep tail replication. Like the printer's gonna be able to pick up all the fine details really, really well. But if you really learned something in this video, guys, uh, please drop a like, subscribe. I'm gonna be doing a lot more videos like this one. But yeah, until next time, guys, peace out. Have a great one.